Hi Hawks, we've been learning about pushes and pulls and balanced and unbalanced forces. Today we're going to start learning about friction. Friction is a force that stops or slows motion when objects rub together. It creates resistance. So if you have a brick and you try to push it along the sidewalk, it's not going to go very far because the texture or the bumpiness of the sidewalk creates friction with the brick. But if you took the same block and you push it across the ice, it's going to go much farther because the smoothness of the ice reduces or minimizes friction. Friction can also produce heat. So if you rub your hands together, that's creating friction and you can feel the slight warmth building between your hands. I have three cups. One is filled with rice, one is filled with sand, and one is filled with pasta. I'm going to stick a pencil into each of them. And I want you to think about friction and make a prediction about what you think will happen when I try to remove the pencil from each cup. If you could go to your reflection sheet and record your prediction, and we'll be right back. While you're making your predictions, I went ahead and stuck the pencils into each cup. Now that you have your predictions recorded, let's see what happens. So for the first one, the rice, when I pick up the pencil, there's a little bit of a resistance there, but the pencil will come right out. Next, we have the sand. And with the sand, again, there's some resistance, but eventually I can get that pencil out. And the last one is our pasta, and the pasta slips right out easily. I want you to take a moment to now complete questions two and three on your reflection sheets. All right, let's learn a little about why that worked the way it did. So when we had the pasta, the rice, or the sand in the cup by itself, there are air pockets between each, each grain or each piece of pasta. When we put the pencil into the cup, those air pockets disappear or become smaller. The smaller the air pockets, the more friction there is, creating more resistance on the pencil as it comes up. Now that we've learned a little bit about friction and you have an idea of what it is and how it works, we're going to do a more visual experiment. I've made three raised car ramps, one out of construction paper, one out of plastic straws, and one out of a grippy type um, placemat. I'm going to take this toy car and we're going to test out each ramp to see which one has the most friction and which one has the least amount of friction. Before we get started, I want you to go onto your reflection sheet and make a prediction about which car ramp you think will be the fastest. All right, the first ramp that we're going to try out is our ramp made out of construction paper. And I'm going to use the stopwatch on my phone to help record the length of time that it takes a car to travel from the top of the ramp all the way down to the bottom. So let's try it out. We're going to round to the nearest second. So this one took about 0.92 seconds, so we're going to round that to one second. The second ramp. is going to be our ramp made out of paper straws. Starting a car at the top. And... Notice this car takes a lot longer with all the bumps due to the straw causing more friction. This one took 4.34 seconds. So we're going to call that four seconds. And our third and last ramp is going to be the ramp made out of the that um, grippy placemat. Again, starting the car at the top and setting our timer. Oh, that one took a little over one second. 
about one and a half, so we're going to round that up to two seconds. Now that we have our times all recorded, I want you to either make your own ramps and time them, or using the times from my ramps, I want you to make a bar graph showing how much friction, um, how friction caused the car to go at different speeds on each one. Remember, your bar graph should have titles and labels.